So as I began to explore what I wanted to do with my life, I really became so focused on the different access to resources and opportunities that different people have and how that influences what happens generation after generation after generation. So I was always fascinated by power. I was always fascinated by, um, you know, what makes places the places that they are? Who decided that? And where's the money going? And so when I went to urban planning school, I think I was somewhat of an outlier. There were a lot of people there who were drawing maps and writing reports and doing all these technical functions, but not ever stopping to think about fundamentally where are our resources going and how are those decisions being made. Ended up enrolling in a two-year city and regional planning master's degree. And I thought, great, this is where we'll really get down to these issues that I've been living through my whole life. And when I got there, nobody wanted to talk about power. Nobody wanted to talk about how places became the way they are, talk about money, talk about resources, talk about decision making. There were a handful of us. And uh, in my cohort group of 30 plus, those of us who were asking those questions, we were all students of color. One was from Latin America, one was African American, one was Filipina. There was myself and one was Chinese. And there we were, the five musketeers. And we had a group we called Students of Color in Planning where we were trying to fill in the gaps of what we saw the actual underpinning to everything we were learning was, but that no one was talking about. Boy is born. He is beautiful, as everyone is. He is brown, like his parents. He is loved. He grows. One day coming from school, cops stop boy. Cops do not love boy. Tell boy so. Call him stupid, bad, stupid, ugly, brown, black, black, brown, ugly. Call him stupid, bad, ugly. TV tells boy what cops say True. Teachers show boy they believe what cops say. True. News say, tubes say, people say, seem like even steeples say what cops say. True. Boy blue. You know, when I, when I get the occasion, and I don't get it very often, to sit down and do trainings or workshops with law enforcement officers. Uh, one of the things that I do usually in the first five minutes is to ask them, um, you know, what's the very first thing you think when you see a young black or Latino male driving a nice car in your community? And almost invariably, and with very few exceptions, including among the officers of color, they will respond, probably a drug dealer. Um, I will then ask them, next question, uh, when you see a young white male, same age, driving the same kind of car in your community, what is the first thing you think? And almost every time, without exception, including among the officers of color, uh, they will say, spoiled little rich kid, daddy probably bought him a car. Now, on the one level, you know, we've been together for five minutes, me and these cops. We've got a two-hour workshop, three-hour workshop coming, and they've already outed themselves fundamentally as racist in the sense that they've acknowledged their perception, which is solely based on skin color, is one that is negative toward, in this case, black or brown kids. Um, how is that going to manifest? Well, logic tells you that if you're a police officer who has that reaction, you may not like the spoiled little rich kid either. In fact, you probably don't. But you're not going to hassle him because you're afraid his daddy might have some power. On the other hand, if you think the black or brown kid is a dealer, you're going to stop him. 
you're going to search him. You're probably not going to find anything according to the data, but now you're going to have his name in the system. You're going to be on the lookout for his car. You're able to, in effect, tag him as a possible wrongdoer. And then that's how these folks get caught up, young black and brown men in particular, in the system being harassed over and over and over again, while the white folks, according to the data, are the ones more likely to have drugs in their car, uh, more likely to, uh, to bring drugs through airports, the ones who are the least suspected or the ones who are actually most likely to be guilty. So you have the combination of personal bias um, and the reality then of systemic mistreatment. And then the irony of it all is it actually leads you astray and doesn't allow you to do your job effectively. If you're a cop, thinks the black or brown kid's got drugs and the white kid has drugs, you're not even doing your job well. So at some level, you know, these, these personal biases not only affect systemic behavior, but they actually have profound larger social consequences in that our criminal justice resources are really deployed in the completely wrong areas. Brown boy. Blue forgets he is loved. Love does not love him. To him, only bad love him. Only black love him. Cops say black bad. TV say what cops say is true. Brown boy, blue. Gets his own face misconstrued as what TV say is true. Brown boy get hot, burning red hot. Brown boy red hot, get pushed and pop past point of control. No one to hold him. Just scold him. Mold him into what cops say true. TV say what cops say, true, but brown boy just blue.